everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Questions and Answers. This is the live stream where we take all your questions, piercing related, and I do my best to answer those for you. Now, my name is Scott Wilkinson. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. Now, behind the other camera over here, we have Jared. So say hello to Jared. Hey, everybody. We're glad to see you. Glad you could make it here. Uh, let's get started. We have a question from Quinn right off the bat. Quinn uh -huh. says, love your interview with Elaine Angel. She suggests in her book that a horizontal nipple piercing can look great if the outer edges are placed just a bit higher than the inner side. So slightly tilted in there a bit. What are your thoughts on that? Is that at a slight angle or just a pierced high? So the, if the outer edges were higher than the inner edges, I guess we're talking about slight yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. slant. It's a real popular thing. Some people like just that small degree angle where they kind of point inwards. I think it flows with the body a little tiny bit more. Um, normally people want just the horizontal ones, um, which I think look great, especially if you're in the rear ring, because the ring's going to lay down. When you do the slight angles, the rings come out a little bit, so that can kind of look a little bit different. But, I mean, it it really depends on the anatomy. Of the slight angle of the piercing. It looks really good. Really, really good. Sorry, everybody. I bet our audio was too hot there for a second, but it's coming down. Should be more comfortable. I'm Are sorry. That in the chat, so no, no. I just, okay. I noticed that I hadn't had it adjusted correctly. Okay. So, so sorry to anyone we got loud on there. Did we get all that or not? Did yeah, yeah. They, okay. they heard it. It just was probably a little over loud. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, Will Jones asks, is it normal to be able to stretch fast at the start? I got up to an eight in just three weeks with no problems. Is that what you well, find? Sometimes it is. We're, I'm guessing we're talking about earlobes. And generally, you want to give it a month and a half to two months between each stretch. But if you've had your ears pierced for a long, long time and you wore a bunch of different earrings, sometimes they're naturally starting to stretch. They might already be at a 10 gauge. Sometimes that happens where it's like you keep running tapers through until the ears at that stretch size. So as long as it doesn't hurt, you're really not doing damage. And I have heard of that before. But that doesn't mean if you just got your ears pierced, you can stretch all the way up to the 8 gauge right away. Most of those people have have it for years and years before they're able to i think a lot of people misunderstand that they think that because piercing is something where you're like enduring pain they kind of think that a stretch is about like a display of toughness like how far can you go and they don't realize that they're messing it up exactly and it's so opposite of that because it's such a slow gradual process like here in america i mean that seems to be the model like how fast how big can we go right now and it's like the whole stretching thing is generally a journey. It represents wisdom. It's a long process. The eldest of the tribes generally had the biggest earlobes, and that represented the wisdom because it spent time and eras and gradually, you know. Got there over a yeah, huge amount so, of time. So it wasn't the toughest guy. It was the oldest exactly. guy, the wisest guy. Very I know we want those results for that image look, but you still got to take it easy. Just don't hurt yourself. Absolutely. Uh, up next, we have a question from Joannis Fries. Hiya, I'm getting my Ooh. vertical labret and Medusa pierced soon. How long before I can change the shorter jewelry? Great question. Um, it really kind of depends on you. It depends on climate, how healthy you are. Sometimes you can get things downsized as soon as probably three weeks. Generally, I suggest around a month is when you can downsize. Now, if it is causing problems, you're biting down on it, or if it's really irritating your gums, then you definitely want to downsize sooner. But if you can wait a good three to four weeks, that's generally what I suggest. Quang is back with a kind of a specific question. I'm not sure if it's easy to answer or okay. not. Says, hi, I want to ask y'all, how do you pierce and mark a piercing that's going to use a curved barbell? Are you going to do like a two push method for each angle or just straight in? Great question. Um, the thing is, is, I just had this discussion with another piercer the other day about how they try to angle and curve their piercings. It doesn't matter. When you lift the skin up, the skin is being contorted, and, and when you let it go back down, it has that natural curve. That's a lot of times why we do the curved barbell in a situation like that. Now, a nipple piercing, I'm going to use a straight barbell because when you put the clamp on there, it's still just flat tissue side to side. But for a navel, you know, that tissue gets pulled up, and then it comes back down. So pierce it straight. It's just find the appropriate jewelry for that piercing. That's why we use curved barbells in some areas and straight bar barbells in others. Awesome. And thank you to Dave and Audrey for letting us know about the audio issues. If we ever don't notice stuff like that, letting us know is awesome so that I can get that fixed. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you. Mariposa wants to know, do vertical labrets commonly reject? Um, no. Uh, in general, I've never really seen too many of my vertical labrets reject out. 
But there again, just like I was answering, uh, I believe with Quang, about the curved barbell. If you put a straight barbell in there, it highly increases the risk of rejection because it, it's more towards the surface. And when we pinch that tissue and we let go, it naturally has that curve in there like that. Um, if you have enough of a pouty lip and you have enough tissue, it shouldn't reject out. Now, do you turn people down for not having a pouty enough lip? I don't know if I've ever turned people down entirely, but I give them the big warning. Okay. Like normally, you, you know, you're looking for a ridge to pierce. This is closer to a surface. If it rejects, you will have a very, very large scar. And so I guess that's my question is, are there certain people who the reason that it doesn't reject is because they got denied in the first place? Because it would have probably if they just didn't have the anatomy. Or do you think most people could support it? I think most people can't support it if it's pierced properly, but there's always situations, you know. I will turn people down for navel piercings. I will turn people down for, for tongue piercings, but I don't know about the vertical labrette. I don't think I've ever completely said no for, oh, except for lip injections. If you're okay. getting lip injections, then I'm going to say no for something Because like you don't want to poke holes through yeah. that and yeah. interfere with that yeah. whole thing. Very cool. Excellent question, Mariposa. Thank you. Uh, Shannon says hello. Hello. Uh, Dingle Magic says, just had my emu order delivered and will start using ASAP. So you'll probably find some use there. It's pretty amazing stuff. As soon as you start using it within a day or two, I've always noticed a difference and it feels good and that stuff works. So awesome. And I've burned myself a couple of times and found that it is a fantastic burn care. Also, if you get it on quickly, I've found it does some magical stuff about avoiding blistering and, and burns. So. I mean, you said you burned yourself and I didn't even see any sort of scar or blister or anything. And it's just like, it's a little red there. That And, and it was, it should have been bad. It's not so. magic, but it's close. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> seems that way. Um, Megan Sherman wants you to explain how catheter needles work. Now, what do we mean by a catheter needle? We mean like the canela needle, right? Like in the, they use in Europe where it cannula, leaves a little, yeah. cannula, there's a little plastic the, yeah, uh, yeah. tube in there. Um, it's pretty much what it is. You have a needle inside and there's a really thin plastic sheathing or tube over the top. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the piercing. The two, then what they do is they're able to pull the needle out with that tube of plastic still inside there. So now the risk of a needle stick or any danger is pretty much eliminated. Then you're able to put the jewelry inside the tube and pull it back through. Now, we don't generally use these here in America. Um, we use just the normal needle with the jewelry. That's why we prefer the internally threaded jewelry. I don't know if it's a requirement or what, but I think a lot more people use externally threaded with the cannula needles because it fits inside there and holds it a lot better. So that, and yeah. it tends to be a European thing, it seems like. Generally, I mean, we can order them here and we can get them, but I don't know any piercers who personally use them. I personally like using the exact same size. There's a slight difference because you have the plastic tubing on the outside. So it's almost like a pierced stretch, which isn't always necessarily bad um, if it's done in minute amounts. But when you pull it out, I think there might be more bleeding. Right. So you don't, don't necessarily have see the benefit. Using them, so I can't verify that. But yeah, I don't know if you have experience using these. Do these typically bleed more? Let me know in the comments. Anyone who has some experience, yeah. excellent. Uh, Mariposa is getting an eyebrow pierced today, but now we're second guessing it because we're scared of rejection. What do you feel like the chances of rejection are on an eyebrow? And is there any way that Mariposa can check and, and feel better about if she's um, eligible? Eyebrow piercings reject even if you have the perfect anatomy. Um, I myself have a ton of tissue. I don't know if you can tell, but my skin is so super loose. And I've had about a dozen eyebrows on each side. Half of them have rejected out and just I've had problems over time. The other half just stayed in there and I just got bored and took them out. So um, even if you have the perfect anatomy, there's always the possibility. Now, the thing is, is it doesn't just pop out overnight. You know, it's a real slow process. So if it seems like your bar is getting longer, it might be rejecting. If you take it out, you won't have that big of a scar you'll have a little bit of a scar but if it rejects all the way out your hair won't even grow in that area and it's definitely noticeable so so that full rejection that would take weeks or maybe months to actually happen and if if mariposa keeps an eye generally on generally weeks to months yes and if you're nervous you can do the camera pit the camera uh, take a picture of it every single day or every like once a week or something like that's the easier thing and you can compare those pictures is the bar getting longer is the tissue getting what's changing if it notices like it's changing and it's you're nervous Take it Just out. Just pop it out. And then all you have is a couple little dots. You yeah. didn't get that full rejection. Exactly. So it's not quite so scary if you keep an eye on it and don't let it come all the way out. 
Gaz says, hey, love your videos. On the inner side of my PA, an irritation bump has come up. My piercer suggested hot compresses twice a day, but it isn't going anywhere. Any advice? Thank you. Okay. A PA is a Prince Albert, and that's a penis piercing where it goes in the urethra out the bottom of the head. For those of you who are paying attention or and don't quite know what that one is. And that would be a ring that's Yeah, that. normally done a circular barbell. can be done with a curved barbell or a capped bead ring. So you have a couple options here. But on the side of the hole on the bottom, there is an irritation bump, correct? Yes, on the uh, yeah. an irritation bump has come up on the inner side of the, the inner side. Okay, sometimes you get that frenulum cord, which is like a little tiny web, which goes from the center of the head to kind of connect. And that's also where the frenulum piercing for the PA or for a penis piercing normally goes, is right behind the head through that frenum. But if the bead or the ring is rubbing up against that cord, that frenum, that might be causing the irritation. And it's just going to take some time to build up a little callus to kind of get used to it. Um, that would be my guess. Uh, if it's a newer healing piercing, definitely abstain from any sexual activity because that will also cause a lot of irritation on there. Um, and the emu oils can help. The hot compresses can also help. Um, but I'm guessing if it's a healing piercing, it's just give it a little time, take it easy, and I will heal up for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm guessing that's what it is up against the frenum cord. So. That should help yeah. there. Uh, and so in addition to the, the hot compress, like, is there anything else we can do? Like, do you recommend emu oil? Yeah. They yeah. Have so it or? That emu oil can work. Um, a lot of times it's just an irritation bump from a new piercing. It'll probably get better real soon. But yeah, the hot compress is probably going to feel the best in that situation. All right. So they've got you on the right track, guys. Yeah. Uh, Audrey M has, has a question that maybe we've all thought of, uh, is there a good way to pick your nose with a fresh septum? I got mine yesterday and it's killing me, lol. Absolutely. Have your friend do it for you. Oh, that's good. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Cause Hard they bad. can see. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you gotta wash your hands, clean your piercing. If you need to do it, you need to do it. But like I said, don't push the crusties through so you clean your piercing real well. If your hands are clean, you're not going to bring germs to that area. I generally suggest trying not to, but that's going to be your best bet. If another option would be maybe take a paper towel, roll that up to a nice tight point, and you could use that like a Q-tip or something where it's not going to leave the residue of the cotton fibers on there. It's the best I got for you. All right. Don't let your friend do it. Don't let your friend do it. <laughs> Becky C says, happy Wednesday. Stay well. Hi, thank you. Happy Wednesday to you. Too. We hope you are also well, Becky. I wish you the best. Yes. Walid Sabi says, hello, any tips from conch stretching using the stocking method? Are you familiar with the stocking method? I'm of guessing stretching? stacking method. Okay. Probably where you put uh, in multiple vowels. rings in there. Yes, yes. Um, time. That's a thick piece of cartilage. It can be stretched. I've had mine stretched. Well, a little bit. I went one size, no, a couple sizes. I went from a four to a zero, but the zero was just too tight for me and I backed off. Ultimately, when I wore mine, I wore mine at a two gauge. Um, but it's a slow process, you know, just a real gradual thing. Um, if it hurts, sometimes back off for a couple of days and you'll kind of get back up there. But yes, yeah, slowly adding a little more rings here and there can kind of help. Um, honestly, I liked plugs better. Uh, sometimes you can buy glass plugs that are half sizes and that seems to work really well. And a lot of the glass plugs are long enough because normal plugs sometimes don't fit inside the conch because sometimes it's too thick, but the glass ones work really well. That's what I would suggest. Tegan Scott says, Hey, my week old conch is sore and itchy due to me hitting it in my sleep. <laughs> Do we have any advice for Tegan? The itchy is almost a good thing. That means it's, it healing. Means it's healing. Don't touch yeah. it. I'm just like, how do you stop hitting it or itching it? It's, it's, you know, I like don't try yeah. to maybe a donut shaped pillow or roll a t-shirt up into a little donut, put your ear in the yeah, hole. I suppose. Yeah. If you're not irritating, you're not going to be going up to kind of hit or your body's still confused on what's going on. And it thinks that it's, you know, it's right. natural reaction. You will get used to it. I think Jared, you're on something. I think a donut pillow. So your ears inside there and it's a comfortable way to sleep. And you can't hit it if it's being inside mm -hmm. the pillow. Hopefully. Yeah. Give Thank that a try, Tegan. Yeah. Let us know. Good luck. Uh, Dancing Leaf wants to know if you can stretch a transverse lobe. That's a good question, Ken. I want to say yes a little bit, but I wouldn't. How come? Um, I've had a transverse lobe before, and mine kind of migrated and shifted really, really quick once it was irritated. Um, they're really tough to get parallel and straight in there. I, I bet it would cause it to reject. And if that left a scar, that would be a wicked scar. 
So when you even say it migrated, and what do you mean? It changed angles? It shifted angles and left a scar on the bottom and the top. I had a vertical transverse lobe, and it eventually turned almost completely sideways and left. Really? Just worked its way on its own? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And it literally happened to me. So, yeah, it was bizarre. Uh, are there differences between a one-bevel needle, like a cannula needle, or a three-bevel needle, like the traditional hollow ones? Isn't it? I don't think there are a single bevel. Be, yeah, you, I mean, I'm. It has to be a bevel on each side, so it might be a dual bevel compared to a tri bevel. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent sure on. Right, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess there. what they're saying That's is the cannula really good, needles have yeah. a different bevel. Well, I know there's different types of needles, and I know they came out with the tri bevel back in the day, but I don't know exactly what the difference is. All I know is I've been using tri bevels right. for years. So, uh, and actually. To get into that, we're actually working on on a needle comparison video where we'll actually probably get into some of that stuff. Wanted to for years. I've collected all the different needles and we can compare sharpness and all kinds of yeah. I'll It'll be a good video. That won't be worth. So that one's coming. Out. I bet and you'll I do like have that some one. Cannula needles, so I'll be comparing those with the other ones too. So science. Oh. All right, coming up next, we have a question from. Wow, you guys are awesome. You let's ask so many questions. We're going to try to speed up here. Okay. Kells Bell says, hey there, question about VCH piercings. I hear they're anatomy dependent. Are Christina piercings anatomy dependent as well? Medium. Um, Christina piercings can be done with a curved barbell if there's enough tissue there. If the tissue is very flat, um, sometimes you can use a surface bar, and that might work better in that situation. That would be about the only thing. Is like If the t skin is so taunt and there's nothing to pierce, then you're not pierceable, but... That's generally the situation. Yeah, Will, when we were talking yeah. about the stretching the lobe earlier, we are, it's uh, been pierced for 15 months. So, yeah, that, that first year, you can get a yeah. pretty fast yep. stretch going yep. after exactly. healed. All right. Sheena. Yeah, I would do uh, Ashley all, all day long. Dermals generally reject out, and I can't imagine trying to remove one. That would be a nightmare if someone came in with a, 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 a dermal in their lip like that, and I had to try to remove it. I don't cut out. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, definitely go with the Ashley. We like yeah. that. Uh, Emily says, can a piercer replace a dermal top if my teardrop is looking kind of grimy after three years? Yeah. Yeah. Generally, um, the only time I've ever had issues if people have something called skin diver, not a dermal anchor, skin divers are like round discs with a point and they just kind of spin. I don't know how you would really change jewelry on something like that. And trying to remove those are really a pain in the butt too, but changing the tops. Yeah. A piercer can help you out. It's going to get irritated for a couple days because that that the base under is going to get wiggled and moved and might, but and your you body's going to get annoyed. If you need a new top, that's okay to do. We just don't suggest you do it on a regular basis, just once in a blue moon, once in a while. It's probably right. one of those blue moons. And sometimes it needs to happen. Yeah. All right, Emily, hopefully, hopefully that helps for you. Dancing Lee says, by the way, Scott, don't retire in the coming years. I'll be coming over and getting an ampelang done by you. Awesome. No plans on retiring. Yes. He loves it too much. I do. I, there's no way I could walk away from this. Shannon says, I got my bridge pierced 16 days ago and it feels pretty healed in that pretty quick. And is there also still time for it to reject or would it have already rejected by now? 16 days, 16 days. There's still plenty of time for it to reject. It can't possibly be healed. Even though it may feel healed, you're trying to heal that fistula and it does take months for that to completely go all the way through there. I mean, unless you had like paper thin skin up there to pierce and like have a really, really tiny bar, but generally that's a lot of tissue and expect probably three to six months for a full heal on that one. All right. Waleed wants to know if, can you get a horizontal eyebrow piercing if you have a vein near that area? Is that a problem? Do we have to like avoid visible veins? There's a lot of veins and capillaries up in that area. Um, if it's a very prominent, noticeable vein right there, I'm, I'm not going to hit it. I will pierce around it, in front of it, or behind it or something, but I won't go through it if it's noticeable to me. But it's not like, oh, man, I got a vein. I'm just not a candidate for an eyebrow piercing. That's not something to worry about. No, 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 not true. We have veins throughout our entire body. I mean, that's if you bleed, we hit a little vein. Very cool. Yeah, or capillary or, yeah. Uh, Nicola G just wanted to say she's booked to get pierced by you in a couple of weeks and is super excited for it. Excellent. Me too. Looking forward to meeting you. Laura S says, I'm thinking about getting a Christina piercing for my seventh piercing, but I'm only 18. Do you think that it's a good idea? Would you recommend, like, is, is there an age you'd wait until before you genital piercings or not really? Not really. It's whatever you're comfortable and whatever you like. 
Uh, if you're comfortable with it and that's something you want to go for, go for it. I mean, it'll leave a little bit of a scar, but generally not too much of one. Just go to a quality piercer and have a good experience. Don't have a negative experience with it. Yeah. That's true. You, yeah. you, like, even though you can go to a cheap shop for sim cheap shop for simple stuff, you want to be careful with the, the more complicated things mm -hmm. that they're getting done right. Yep. Yep. Uh, Waleed wants to know if it's safe to tattoo stretched lobes. I think so. I've seen people, but the thing is, is, um, granted, I'm not a tattoo artist, but to my understanding, your skin is kind of like a grid. Okay. There's all these little pores and things are kind of, but when you stretch your lobes, you're stretching pores out. So it can be a little bit more patchy. I, I think it's similar to like trying to tattoo scar tissue where like some of those holes are larger, some are more close together. So that's why you don't get a good solid color on scar tissue. And this is kind of scar tissue too. You're stretching things out. So those skin cells have been manipulated, I guess. So it can be done, but it right. generally looks patchy. I, I have seen it. I remember when we were at uh, APP, I mm -hmm. saw a guy in the pool and super cool ears. Yeah. So a big stretch and then like tattooed down the helix. So I thought that was kind of neat. I hadn't seen right. it before. Did he have plugs in? Um, yes. Okay. I think he did. And and the, it wasn't patchy. It was super smooth. Uh, there you go. So there you go. Kind of depends, on, depends on your ears, but yeah, it, it can be done. Very cool. Um, what is the container you store your jewelry in? Like in the zero gauge lobe video in the background, uh, like the, the compartments that you have. Yeah. And uh, what are the advantages of stretching your ear when you pierce it at a 16 gauge versus a zero gauge? So that's two completely unrelated questions, I guess. Yeah, they are. Um, they're just like tool, like small parts containers. And I keep my jewelry inside baggies. Um, and then once I'm ready to do the piercing, I use like uh, a Statum or an M3, which is like an ultra fast autoclave. And I sterilize all the implements as needed. So all my jewelry and stuff isn't pre-autoclaved. I autoclave as I need it. Um, as far as like piercing small size compared to big size, small size is going to be a fast, well, not necessarily a faster heel, but if you took it out, it's not going to leave the scar and it'll go back to normal. Large sizes like zero gauge, if you took it out, you're going to have a large slit in your ear if it did close all the way up. So um, you can save some money by going to the larger sizes, but it leaves a much, much bigger scar. If you were to quit yeah. on it eventually. Yeah. All right. Excellent questions, guys. Thank you. Uh, Elusive Tune says, hey, Scott, got my tongue pierced a few months back. What is your opinion on non-metal balls for the bar? It doesn't matter at all. I know a lot of people think that if you go to a plastic bead, if you bit down on it, you're not going to do damage to your teeth. But honestly, there's a little metal pin inside there most of the time, and that pin can actually do damage to your teeth. Plus, a lot of that plastic is dental acrylic, which can actually be as hard as your teeth, which can still damage your teeth. So it's kind of like a false sense of security. Put the proper size jewelry in there, check your beads, make sure it stays tight, and that's the better option. I prefer metal over plastic anyways. I'm that's just your bread. But yeah. is there any like if someone just like loves the idea of a hot pink ball on their tongue jewelry, is that okay? Sure. You could get it anodized as well. Okay. Like, but if you anodize it, tongue barbells generally lose their color a little faster. There's a lot more wear. So you're gonna wear off that real thin layer of uh, titanium oxide on there. But for the most part, that would be the safer. If you want to go plastic, go plastic. But I mean, in general, I think it's not safer. It's not a, don't, it's not safer. Don't do it because you think you're doing your teeth a favor. Do it right. because you really you love want that look. look or something. Absolutely. But in general, I don't like plastic jewelry though either. Awesome. Thank you, Elusive Tomb, for that. Moon Girl says, hello. I just got an industrial piercing yesterday and passed out two times right after the piercing was done. Is this common or is there something wrong with me? I don't think there's anything wrong with no, you. No, no. I'm sure you're just fine. It's an intense procedure. Uh, it's two separate piercings. Um, I have lots of, well, not as much anymore, but in the past, I've had quite a few people pass out. People come in extra nervous. They're filling out paperwork. I've had them pass out then. I've marked belly button piercings, and all of a sudden you feel that hand on your shoulder, and you look up at a pale person. So a lot of it could be psychological. If you went in there with the expectation of extreme pain, I'm guessing it probably wasn't as painful as you were expecting. And a lot of times... We build up all this adrenaline for something like if you were to have an arm amputated, you're so nervous that this extreme thing's going to, and it doesn't happen, the body has to release those endorphins, and that's generally why we pass out. So a lot of times, it's more of a psychological thing where we psych ourselves out, and the little thing happens, and then it's just like, release. 
even though we do have a lot of questions and I want to move on, tell the story real quick about the the clients you had who who took turns passing out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just told the story the other day. I, again, it's a psychological thing. Um, I had these two girls in the room, and one girl got her navel pierced, and her friend was watching. And the girl who got her navel pierced passed out. Well, the girl while she passed out, her friend who watched her get pierced freaked out as well. So she passed out. And when the girl who had her navel pierced woke up, saw her friend passed out, freaked out, she passed out. The girl who woke up, who was watching, saw her friend, and she went back out. And at that point in time, I'd yell for tattoo artists to come in so we could separate these two so they could stop seeing each other passed out. And it was a chain reaction. It was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. We all giggled about it, but I mean, it was like, Oh my God! Really? So, that, so it doesn't yeah. mean there's anything wrong with you. No, it's just sometimes no, no. it happens. It, it, just... it just happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So not a big deal, Moon Girl. Everything's <laughs> normal. Uh, Lied Erosion says, "Hi, I got a rook and a conch a month ago, and they don't hurt, and there is no crusties or discharge. The conch does have a small bump on the backside, though. I was wondering if I should downsize. If you have wait, how long?" It has a been of, a month ago. A month ago. It might be a little bit early to downsize, but if the bar is too long and it's causing problems, then you probably should. Now, the other thing I would ask is if you are still possibly wearing a mask, because sometimes the bands that go behind your ear rub right up against the conch, and a lot of times that does cause that bump. So if you're wearing a mask, that would be the cause of the bump. Um, again, if you could wait a little bit longer to downsize, it's probably a better idea because you still are in the early healing stages. And uh, adding on to that, if it's time to downsize, can we switch to rings too or should we wait longer? Absolutely not. I would wait at least a minimum of four months to change to a ring. Okay. If you change to a ring too early, I guarantee that bump's going to happen. It's going to get bad. Let it still heal. Let it calm down, get yeah. totally loose, and then yep, yep, try the ring. Yep. All right. So hoping, hopefully that answers that question for you. Lied. Patience. Uh, this is a tough one, Eunice, but we'll ask him. Okay. What's the worst customer you've ever had? Oh, um, I've had some situations where other shops have fed my customers bad info to come back and raise a ruckus here. Okay. So they're feel like I got the wrong jewelry. I got this, this tears. You're going to cause an infection. You're going to, and trying to calm. So I don't necessarily blame the customer you know, because they went on, got second opinion, and some other negative piercers have fed them full of like, oh, he a bunch of BS. He shouldn't have yeah. used a curved barbell. Should have done this. this Should have done this. Like and, and like, and they come in crying, "What'd you do to me?" And have to deal with that situation where they're in the middle of they two piercers with different opinions. That's that's right. kind of the situation. Um, I've had people. I had one girl scream. So so darn loud it's not even funny like i was getting ready to do a nipple piercing and yeah they're a little painful but she screams so loud before the piercing even happened my whole body froze up it's like you know the little kids that can do like screams like 10 octaves higher than someone should be able to hear like she just kept doing that and i was just like stop it you know <laughs> so so that's how you get labeled as a bad customer by scott is yelling in his ear yeah yeah just screaming and just <laughs> yeah it was just unnecessary and generally in situations like that is when you have large groups of people too because it feeds the negative energy some or negative positive and it goes back and forth so sometimes smaller groups don't cause as much now just to clarify does that mean you're mad at someone for letting out a little yelp do you feel like it's vocalizing is bad or you feel like this was like a loud horror production scream that was unnecessary? Okay. The situation is, is I said, okay, when you're ready to get pierced, you take a deep breath in. When you blow it out is when I do the piercing. She went, ah, and just started screaming as loud as she could and wanted me to go during this scream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I can understand that. So, but it was so high pitched. It was so loud. And it was just, and then she got done. She's like, did you do it? I'm like, no, what was that? You know? <laughs> so uh, that one sticks out. <laughs> oh, right. So, all right. So that's the kind of thing you can do. Yeah. Jalen Ward says, hello. I had a nose piercing for four years, but had to take it out last October, about a year ago, due to an irritation bump, random and big. Do you think I could get it re-pierced? And or completely wait for it to go away. I miss it a lot. So it sounds like there's still a little bit of mark. I there. would, yeah, I would use some sort of scar tissue remover if you haven't already. The one I like and talk about all the time is Mederma. Um, you can buy it uh, 
pretty much Amazon, Walmart, most pharmacies, Walmart, yeah. pharmacies, yeah. But it's called Extreme Scar Gel, and that can take away the discoloration and the bump. If you get it pierced and there's still discoloration and a bump, it's probably going to stick around and it'll never look 100%. So you need your skin looking as good as possible first. So with that being said, I would try to wait a little longer. But you can if you want. All right. How are we doing, Jared? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Scott? I'm doing great. I was just I was just slightly taken aback by this next question. We're going to okay. see what's up. Okay. Quang says, does getting an infected piercing on the so-called triangle of death of your face, known for death from popping pimples, actually kill you? So is there a spot on your face where if you pop a pimple and or get pierced, you'll die? I've never heard of it. No. I mean, I've been piercing since 1994, 20 plus piercings a day. I've never had anyone die on me. Perfect even, record. Perfect record. And I, I not even once, be, not even like a little bit of dead. I, and then no, like you woke them back up. No, I didn't even have to slap them to get them back. No, like, death. no one's even nothing. Not, no, death. nothing. That perfect was, record. I don't even, I wish I could tell you how many piercings that would be like, I don't know, 30,000 plus piercings. I'm sure it's more than that. Even. It's insane amount, but yeah. So I would say no, not, not a problem. I'm not a doctor. Right. You can ask a doctor if they but, know about the, the travel. No, I don't know anything about that. Also, if that if this place is so effective, we should let martial artists know. Because they only have to attack this triangle and, and to try and affect okay. affect death on their enemies. <laughs> uh Will Jones says, I noticed after started stretching my lobes, and I noticed they aren't exactly perpendicular. Will this go away or correct itself with larger sizes? A little bit and not really at the same time. Um at, well, I suppose at larger sizes that they're always going to kind of face forward. It's just the way the earlobe sits on the bottom. But honestly, if you start looking at stretched earlobes, you see the plugs. You don't necessarily see the tissue on the bottom. Start looking at people's bottoms of their ears. It's going to be inconsistent. Some areas are thicker. Some are thinner. Um, so larger sizes, it probably will go away a little bit. But then at the same time, if you look at everyone's normal earlobe piercings, it's pretty rare to find people who have straight earlobe piercings. So many people had them done at younger ages. They you grow, they grow crooked. Piercing guns sometimes misfire, go at different angles. So unless you've had it done recently, you probably have crooked lobe piercings. And lobes aren't even necessarily perfectly symmetrical in the first place. Mine are. Oh, well, no, you don't even have them. Okay. That's which right. makes them symmetry. <laughs> symmetry that's right. And that's their, right. And yeah, so that's absolutely right. No one has symmet symmetrical lobes. The angles might be slightly different, just even the way it sits. So nothing to worry about. Ursula's Odds and Sods says, hey, Scott, after my difficult ear gets to six gauge, <laughs> should I continue stretching by half millimeter increments or start going by a full millimeter? I'm eager for my ears to be the same size, but I don't want to rush it. You're absolutely right. You don't want to rush it. Listen to your body. If you can do the one millimeters and it doesn't hurt, go for it, I guess. But I mean, if you have access to those half millimeter sizes, it's a must, much nicer, more gradual way to go and your ears will be much nicer for you. Um, and I'm guessing you probably sleep on that one side that stretches easier. That's generally what happens. You sleep on the one side and it kind of gets twisted and distorted, and that's why they stretch easier. It almost helps. I don't know why, yeah, how you have a stubborn up. side, but there's always one side that heals better. You know, there's always one side that stretches faster, and it generally has to do with the sides we sleep on. Interesting. Well, generally, Gen yeah. generally, not every time. Danny Cross says, I'm stretching my septum. I'm currently at an eight gauge, and I'm trying to stretch up to a six. I used a taper and I got it all the way through without issue, but then I couldn't get my jewelry through no matter how I turned it. Advice. Yeah. Um, give it a week. Give it a week. You had that septum stretched up to that size. You're going to put the eight gauge back in and just wear that for a little bit. Um, I don't know if you've ever done stack jewelry, but maybe if you had a smaller clicker or something where you could put a couple smaller ones in with that eight gauge, that might allow you to get to that that next size a little bit easier. Um, but the thing is, is when I've had my septum stretched, like if I can't get jewelry in, just wear the other jewelry for like a week or so. And then it was stretched once it'll stretch up easier the second time around. So that's why I would suggest that transfers in septum piercings at larger sizes at tight ones, not easy to do at all. Not easy. So you're not alone. Will Jones says, Scott, do yes. they go all the way through? <laughs> and just halfway the rest is done with smoke and mirrors Ooh. yep that's what i used to say all the time and it used to confuse the hell out of people <laughs> like what huh? huh yeah yes 
But no, unless that's a legit question. Are you t if you're talking about these are high nostrils, so they go through the nostril, not like a nasal lang. Um, these ones, uh, my nostrils are seven sixteenths. I do have a septum piercing that's stretched, but I don't wear jewelry because it doesn't fit. Um, bridge goes all the way through. <laughs> Most piercings do. Yeah. All right. Uh, Just Drift 96 says, I'm Ross. Just want to say you both have awesome personalities for YouTube. Do you have any hobbies other than piercing tats and badass facial hair? <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, I'm an artist. Uh, I like creating. Um, I never saw myself as a business owner, but I own Piercing Vegas here. And creating and building this up was another artistic venue, uh, venture I guess I didn't even see. So I just like creating things. I like painting. I like drawing. I thought about getting into tattoos for a while, but my love for piercing, I wasn't willing to give that up for the learning of the tattoos. Um, I love animals. I don't have any pets right now. I used to be a dog owner. Uh, yeah. And I love the outdoors. I love camping, things like that. You smoke cigars. I love cigars. <laughs> yes. That is my other thing. It's like, yeah, it's, I love cigars. So, Jared, what Very about cool. you? Tell us about. Um, I'm a mixed martial artist, so I like you know uh, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and fighting people. Uh, I'm a musician. Actually, Scott's also a musician. Yes, I, don't know I if am. You mentioned yep. that. Uh, but yeah, I play guitar and bass and a little bit of drums. Uh, and I'm a nerd. I do a lot of computer stuff, like all this kind of stuff. Little Blender, little uh, graphic design. You know, figuring it all out, learning everything one piece at a time. Yep. Yep. So. Awesome. Thank cool. you for that question, Ross. That's yeah, pretty cool. Really it's, it's nice to that. answer yeah. a question that's different. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Angel Inglesius Ramirez says, hello, everyone. My question is, I've had an industrial pierced back in January, and the angle is off, which has caused a small bump, and sometimes when I clean it, it bleeds. Advice. Yeah. Pretty standard. Um, this happens a lot. It, it does. Um, if the angle's off, meaning... Okay, if you did two piercings and one of the needles is slightly off like this, sometimes the bump won't go away if it's off enough. Sometimes we can bend or manipulate the bar a little bit. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So you got to bend it just the right amount and then it can sit in the right spot. And sometimes that can help. Sometimes if it's just the wrong spot, there's no fixing it though. Um, bumps do happen on industrials. It might still heal. Just be patient. I expect a minimum of a year for most industrials to heal. So it can calm down. They just got to yeah. work on yeah. it a little. Depends on how bad it's off. Kells Bells wants to know, do vertical and horizontal eyebrow piercing reject just the same? No, I would say hor if you had the right anatomy, horizontal eyebrow piercings typically reject more than the vertical ones do. But if you didn't have the right anatomy, they both can reject out. Mock Sheen says, I'm planning on getting a gestrum done today. Do you have any advice on getting ready or aftercare? Yes, um, I always suggest using a wound wash spray, which is sterile saline solution. I like meal med. Um, as far as preparation, eat a nice big meal before you go. Um, I'll bring a good friend who's supportive, not someone who's going to freak out. But yeah, the good meal before you go, I think, is one of the biggest keys just because you have energy. You need the energy to kind of deal with something like this. And it's just, it makes it easier. You'll be fine, though. It's a beautiful piercing. Congratulations. All right. Shoga says, hey, Scott, just want to say thanks for all the videos, man. I'm 12 piercings deep now. Sweet. And they keep me informed, but also give me some class ideas. Hello from Northern Ireland. Awesome. I love people from all over the world that are tuning in here. And it's like, that's the one thing that ties us all. We can all have piercings and it's, it's just a love for piercings. It's what a great community. It, it really you is. All. You know, we're all here of a shared love. Yeah. Uh, Quang wants to know, does, how does cheap glass jewelry different from high-end glass jewelry? Does it shatter if it goes under the smallest pressure? Yes. I think there's different grades of glass. Um, I'm not a glass expert. I just buy high-quality glass so I know it's good. Like, Glassware Studios is great. Um, here we carry Gorilla Glass. Um, there's been other companies I've gotten glass from, but generally I stick to those those two. That's what I prefer. Um, cheaper stuff, yeah, it can break and shatter if it gets dropped. My stuff I've dropped it higher, and it generally holds up. So, so but yeah. yeah, you'd have to. It's and the kind polish, of... I mean, not the polish, but the edges. Sometimes there's sharp edges on cheaper glass. Um, the comfortability, make sure it's cast to the right size. Casts are melted. I, yeah, I'm not a glass guy. I love it though. 
All right. Dave G says, no question, just a comment for Scott. Sure. Wanted to say I'm a longtime follower, seen every video multiple times, and you have inspired Dave to become a piercer. So thank you for everything, Scott. It was my pleasure, and uh, thank you for being part of the community, and good luck on your piercing journey. Monica Ewa Peterson says, hi, Scott and Jared. Nice to see you again. Hello. I'm super glad you're here, too. Yeah. Uh, Luna to blue. I'm going to do my second eyebrow piercing next to my first one. Could this cause the first one to reject? I pierced the first one on April 30th this year. You should be fine. As long as it's pretty well healed up, it's going to cause it to swell up again. So if you did downsize, you would want to go back to a that larger size. But if you have a little tiny bit of bar in there, you should still be fine. Um, generally the reason they reject is because there's not enough tissue in the body is pushed, but if it's there, it's probably pretty good. Rebecca Myers says, hey, Scott, my flat slash helix piercing has healed slanted. Yeah. I believe it was from sleeping on it when it was almost done healing. Not sure what jewelry would maybe help. Okay. So when they slant like this, my only suggestion would be um, a no-pull disc. Okay. A no-pull disc is a, is a round silicone disc. I think they're about six, maybe seven millimeters, if I remember right. But you would take your labret post out, put it on the end of it, and it's going to pull it tight. The larger disc might kind of pull it back to a little bit of a shape. And if you can get it to sit a little bit more flat, then you're going to want to take it out and downsize to the shorter bar so it can't fall back into that position. Okay. I can't guarantee that's going to work, but that's what I've been trying lately for people who have the migrated flat piercing it's so important to downsize your flat piercing so this doesn't happen so the the odds are that this happened because rebecca didn't realize when it had shrunk and it was too long and could have gone Correct. in and downsized it's, it's, it's a fine line it, it, it's not going to be fully healed before you downsize it just needs to be healed enough where the swelling's gone down and we can kind of get it to sit in the right position so it doesn't shift because that hanging bar is yes. that extra pressure on yes. one side yes. all right so hopefully you can get that fixed up rebecca try looking for a no pull disc yeah odd feather says hey scott what's the average healing time for a rook and is it normal for it to be sore every now and then yeah um cartilage takes a long time to heal because there's not a lot of blood flow but that one is generally pretty protected um if you if you have a ring in there that's going to take a little bit longer but i would say expect four to six months seems to be a pretty good time for a rook to heal as long as it was pierced properly and you have proper aftercare Try not to sleep on it. But once in a while, if you do sleep on it, you will notice it will get a little sore here and there. The other nice thing about a rook is take pictures of it. Once the swelling's down and it's the same size as the other one, generally you're pretty healed up. It stays swollen the whole healing process. It's super convenient with cell phones now being able to just take it's pictures so and compare is. them. It's such a great tool. Uh, will Jones says, Scott, would you ever get a coin slot and a stretched conch and wear rings that wrap around your snug? Since you were talking last stream about getting a coin slot. Yeah, I totally would get coin slot. I, I'm symmetrical. I'd want one on each side. Um, I do have stretch conches. They're probably only like a four gauge right now, but I don't wear any jewelry through there. But I might be able to wear a, ri a ring that would go right through, size, through the slot like and through that. Through. It's a neat idea. It's a possibility. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, kind of a fun idea. Will, we yeah, like that. Thank you. Uh, Dag Andre Omden Osmundson says, <laughs> I had my ears expanded from and not pierced to eight millimeters in 30 minutes at the studio. Want an insert a 10 millimeter myself. Is that okay with a one flared plug? A single flared plug. Um, had ears expanded for not pierced. Eight so millimeters. stretched. Yeah. To no, eight that's millimeters. general. I mean, so you're saying it's like a dead stretch going from eight to 30 millimeters from an existing. Yeah, that's. Or in 30 minutes. Like, yeah. That's too much. You're. Your skin cells can only take so much stretching before ripping and tearing happens. I'm pretty positive there's probably some bleeding. It hurt really bad. A proper stretch should not hurt. It's a nice, slow, gradual stretch. And so now Dag that wants, one's not proper. Dag wants to go from the 8 up to a 10 because they've got it themselves. So that they're not going to find that to be easy either. If we no. had a bad stretch just now, we're not going to probably be able to stretch again another 2 millimeters. No, no. Give it some time. Um, I don't know how long that happened, but generally when you're looking at your plugs, if you pull down on them, you should be able to see light through it and the next plug should be able to fall into place. 
Don't use tapers for these things. That's why tapers are so dangerous. It's a tool that gets misused all the time and rips and tears and does serious damage. It should just basically be a transfer tool if you need to use a transfer tool. Rebecca Myers wants to know what the best place online to purchase high quality body jewelry is. And right now we don't have a recommendation, but we're working hard on putting something together so that we will have a place to send you to buy high quality yeah. jewelry. Uh, Tegan Scott, uh, clarifying about the travel pillow and, uh, they sleep on the other ear and it's just okay. moving around and, and pawn at it in their sleep. You know what I mean? There's not yeah. a lot you can do. Not much you can really do. Yeah. Duct tape your hands down by your side. The sin That's machine terrible. uses emu oil on the ears, but is going to get a septum and nostril pierce tomorrow. Can I use emu oil on both to keep them lubed up? Are you talking about to heal or before you go in? I think probably to heal. So like right after getting them pierced, like are they, they're thinking of it as being like a jewelry lubricant. What do you think of that? Is it um, kind of a little bit. Uh, we have a pamphlet here for the emu oil. It says it can be used for healing piercings. I have never done that, so I can't really vouch for it. All I know is it really helps for irritated piercings. I generally don't like using certain chemicals to heal piercings because it's only your body that can heal it. It's just we're trying to prevent irritations from happening. That's why I promote the wound wash spray. So just clean. People it. have used it to heal and it can work, but I don't know. So you usually save the emu oil until there's a problem. You don't just use it in the first place on a new piercing. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So that's at least, that's how we do it, Sin Machine. But, you know, let us know what your results are based on yeah. what you do. It could work. Yeah. Marina Carballo says, Scott, do you have any advice for new piercers? Greetings from Argentina. I love your content. Yes. Thank you and welcome here. Um, never stop learning. That's the best advice I can get. Um, networking, talking to other piercers. If you have a question, you know, you got to ask those questions. But don't ever get content and say, I'm a master piercer. I should never stop learning because I still take classes. I still talk to other people. Um, I, I love situations like this where I get asked these questions. And if I don't know, I have to do more research and keep learning to become the best person you possibly can. Um, surround yourself with uh, a good quality shop. Working at a low-end shop, low-quality jewelry, you're not going to progress. If you can get to a shop where there's multiple piercers, you can bounce ideas off each other, and that way you're going to progress the most. I know as a musician, um, I learn the most when working with other people as opposed to just working by myself and not being exposed to other ideas. Absolutely. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Uh, Liga Maria, G de S de C, <laughs> a Silva, Mendez Diaz, says... I have a microdermal on my belly that is with the infection. It hurts so bad if it gets touched a little hard, it is swollen and the and red. The piercing itself is placed okay, but I don't know how to heal. Okay. So I'm assuming it's a newer piercing. What I suggest you use is the wound wash spray, which is the sterile saline solution. Hopefully you can get it there. Um, you're just going to kind of spray it on your piercing. Let the solution soften up the little dried crusties or irritations and I like taking a paper towel or a piece of gauze, rolling it to a tight point, and you need to clean underneath the disc, you know, because there's like the disc in your skin. Crusties build up underneath here, and you need to get them out of there so it doesn't irritate it. If you think it's infected right now, sometimes taking a hot compress, like a paper towel, dip it in the warm, warm water and hold that over the top, that can help. Um, truly, if you think it's infected, you might need to go to a doctor, though. That's what I would suggest. Ultimately, if it is infected, if it's just irritated, clean it properly. Quang asks, when you pierce the ear cartilage, does the cartilage still stay in the ear? And if so, does that cause any problem like splinter? Is the question if the... Removing tissue. Yeah, does the needle yeah. take any tissue um, out? All the experiments I've done in the past with piercing needles, needles do not remove tissue. They make a crescent shape incision and push tissue off to the side, which is why most piercings don't bleed. Um, if you take the jewelry out, that's when bleeding happens. It's the same thing with a shot of the doctor. It's the same, you know, you get the shot on there and when you pull the needle out is when they have to put the gauze on there to stop the bleeding because everything kind of relaxes, goes back and it's an open wound. So no, we don't remove any tissue. All right. And that's why cartilage stays so sore. You're taking a crescent incision. 
pushing that cartilage off to the side. There's a lot of pressure on there. And that's the argument that some people make for O needles or, or punches. Correct. Some people uh, like to remove that tissue so it heals a little faster and nicer. They can, but then it's eh, borderline illegal. Yeah, then you're running into Depending the, the law. At. Yep. Don't fight the law. The law will win. Uh, SVXN says, hey, Scott, is it a good idea to get two eyebrow piercings, one on each side, if I don't have any other piercings? Thank you. Would you start off with some eyebrows? Yeah, sure. I mean, it kind of depends. The only thing I would say about some people, like if you manicure your eyebrows, is manicure the right word? Yeah. Care, yeah. Mm. If like if they're fairly thin, these mm. will leave scars. You will have small dots on there. If you're okay with that, then I would say go for it. If you're worried about the scarring, that's not the best one because it's kind of hide to hard. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to hide those um, scars. Absolutely. Uh, Odd Feathers wants to know what type of materials should you never wear in your stretched lobes. Um. It's a different answer of well stretching than stretched. Correct. Yeah. Um, a little bit because people can have reactions. Certain some materials and plastics can secrete like the oils, and you can have reactions that way. Certain woods can be very toxic because there's certain oils in there where, which can cause serious reactions. So be careful um, with exotic. I don't woods. have a list of all the things that are dangerous. Uh, I believe I've heard you say not to wear silicone and stretched stretching lobes not to stretch because it's tacky it's safe to wear but if you're stretching it's going to grab a hold and rip and tear but if you're healed that would be safe to wear once you're staying there on are a size certain woods i think like zebra woods not a real safe wood to wear you'll see it's like it's a striped wood but it'll be an inlay inside a safe piece of wood so most reputable jewelry manufacturers that make wood jewelry things like this are going to only produce stuff that's not going to get them into trouble so they're probably you know, selling reasonable. So things, if you're finding so crazy hope. stuff on Etsy, like I've never seen one of these before, I would question it. Vig Lee says, hi, Scott. I just got a question about lip piercings and gum damage. Uh, some months ago, I got vertical snake bites, snake fangs done in June, and I couldn't be happier with them. Thank you for the. Yeah, the help. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, with oral piercings like that, anything that goes into the mouth, you can do damage. But if you're doing vertical piercings like that, they look great. They're super, super cool. Just Drift 96 asks, has there ever been a piercing or body mod that is still yet to be done? Any piercing discovery you think would be really cool looking? Um, There always will be something because someone always has that different growth on the ear, maybe a fold, maybe they got in an accident and they have a scar across an area that's protruding, that's large enough to pierce. Things like that can be done. Especially um, when we start talking about like scarification and implants, it's like it's exactly. literally limitless. It's a, so the body is very manipulatable. Mani I'm having a tough time with words. Manipulable? I'm, I think that's all yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, okay, manipulatable. Manipulatable. But, but anyways, most of the common piercings are done. There might be an occasional different one here and there coming out. Um, it's a lot of times, like like the cat flap piercing, is technically like a helix piercing, just a different growth, like I was saying, if you have a different anatomy. Most things have been done. Things like uh, snake eyes has become popular because it's a newer piercing, but we've tried it in the past and realized the damage. That's why we didn't do it. And now it's trying to make a comeback saying it's a new, like we've tried it in the past and it was dangerous and we stopped doing it. So your most things are done. Yeah. So there's there a reason new ideas for jewelry and jewelry tops and combinations, but, and now with different body like implants, I guess, cause there's always new shapes Correct. and weirdness. But as there. far as piercings go, pretty most much. ridges are pretty visible and we've pierced most of them. Rita wants to know uh, how painful is a rook piercing and, and how's the healing go down? It's different with every piercer. Now, I personally do my piercings bottom up with a curved needle. So it's one motion. Some piercers, some piercers will pierce into a receiving tube and then the needle has to re-angle so the bevel of the needle can grab and that can kind of hurt a little bit more. So you'll hear both sides of the spectrum on this. Like it's not that painful at all or it was really, really rough. So... I wish I could give you a solid answer, but find a good piercer and it will make it less painful. Less painful. People don't realize that a, um, an oh, experienced hand is a yeah. big difference. Mm -hmm. I hear it's, it all the time here where people are like, oh, that was not what I expected. It was yeah. not as bad as it hurt when the last piercing. Like, mm -hmm. Pierce nipples and people are like, wow, my nostril piercing hurt more than that. Like it shouldn't have. <laughs> it shouldn't have. <laughs> an actual cat wants to know, uh, can a piercing that's fully healed still reject? Yes. Um, I've had piercings fully heal and I just get 
hit real hard in the eyebrow piercing. It's enough to irritate it. The body goes, whoa, what's going on in there? And then it just started rejecting out. It's not fair. I've seen the same thing with nipple piercings, navel piercings, piercings that can be hit and irritated hard, and it will cause a rejection. Heather Nicole says, how badly are snake bites supposed to hurt? Um, generally, I think biting your lip or biting your tongue hurts more than the actual piercing. But honestly, you do a little experiment and talk to like five or 10 of your friends and ask them how bad, scale of one to 10, does stubbing your little toe hurt? And you're going to hear all answers from two to 10. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say a one that doesn't hurt at all. But it's crazy. I personally put that as like an eight or a nine. It's one of the more painful things to stub your little toe. But some people don't think it hurts that bad. And that shows the difference in pain level from person to person. So it, even advice from someone else might not mean anything to it you. It doesn't. Like how many people go in and like three people want to get their all the belly buttons pierced. First person gets like, oh, I didn't feel a thing. Next person's kicking and screaming. Like I didn't do anything different. It's different perceptions, what's in your head. There's a lot involved. Emily Kreider says, hi, Scott. Hello. Why do some piercers still recommend soap, even APP piercers? Um, it took me a long time to work my way ag against it. It only makes sense to keep the area clean. Um, I don't believe soap should be put inside the body, and I think that's counterproductive. So that's why I stopped suggesting soap inside the piercing. There are some soaps which are a little bit more mild and can help, um, like for instance, I love Provon soap. If someone's getting the start of an infection or irritation, a lot of times that kind of clears things up a little tiny bit. It's just a, a cleaner thing to help fight an infection. But I don't suggest using it for very long. Most, I, I think it's old habit. You know, right. most APP piercers have been doing it a long time and it makes sense to keep the area clean but it doesn't make sense to get it inside there. And it's just different training. Also, if I recall correctly, some state laws might require you to say soap, even though you don't actually, as a piercer, recommend it. The law says you have to say it. It does say that here that we are supposed to require soap. So my Africa pamphlet does say that we do suggest using antibacterial soap because that's the law. But my the verbal aftercare is like, just use the wound wash spray, clean around the area with soap, but don't get it directly inside. What an interesting point where like the, the attempt at regulation to make it better is, is not helping. And in fact, like counterproductive It's good intent, but it's just old information. Absolutely. Yeah. So that clears it up for you, Emily Catberry says, Hey guys, when I downsize my helix after about four weeks, am I okay to change it to a ring or maybe just a stone? Thanks. Um, no, I would maybe just a stone stood. So stud, okay. Stud, yeah, oh, no, stud. stay away from rings. You want this to be fully healed. Cartilage takes minimum four to six months, sometimes up to a full year if you're sleeping on it, irritating it. Rings will definitely irritate it because they're going to spin and rotate. They twist while you're sleeping on it. So stick with a stud for quite a while longer. I would say maybe six months would be the earliest I would suggest doing a ring. Wow. So really give it a long time because yeah. you don't want to just, you'll just be back in four weeks asking us questions about your new bump. You feel good now, but once you have that irritation bump and it starts getting sore, you're going to be dealing with that with months. And you're like, why didn't I just leave it in there? It's just be patient. It's worth it. Just Drift wants to comment on a previous question. Sure. Uh, have stretch marks on my arms and a tattoo over the largest scar and can confirm that it still looks great. Was able to tattoo right over the scar tissue. No problem. Wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It kind of depends on the actual scars. But I noticed some of my scars on my body, like I had some branding done up top up here, um, and the black work is definitely thinner in the spots that were burned. Interesting, because it's you know? total black, too, so you're yeah, going for a different yeah. look there. So, And who knows that branding was probably a much deeper scar, too. That's true. So there's so many differences. And a burn yeah. scar would be different it also, would. I'm sure. So, But yeah. Like, yeah, good point. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I just say, toss it on the table. You never know what to expect. Heather Nicole just got some snake bites done and thinks that the bars might be too small. How do you know if you need longer ones or not? Okay. First thing I would say is, are you taking anything for swelling? Ibuprofen, Aleve, or Advil? Because the more you keep the swelling down, the better off you're going to be. They're going to be swollen. Now, the bead and the disc might be tight, but if, if it's going into your lip or that bead is sinking into the front, you probably want to get longer bars. But again, try to keep the swelling down. And that swelling generally lasts three to five days. So depending on where you're at. And some you know, cold. Maybe like fill up a cup with ice water. Ice water, yeah. You know, 
7 Eleven, get some Slurpees, some icy stuff. You know, there's there's a lot of variation. So, um, but try to keep the swelling down. Hot, spicy foods is going to make it swell more, too. So, that's something people don't think about. CJB also just recommending those donut p- pillows to anyone who has trouble with ear piercing irritations. That's a winning plan, apparently. They really are. I'm, I'm so old school. I've never, ever tried one. Um, but I've also learned to like cut my arm and create my own donut pillow for that. Mm-hmm. So, you yeah, already have a, it, it, it does work. Brian Long says, Scott, I love the septum piercing you did for me when I was there in July. Excellent. Question. Does the centered symmetrical eyebrow piercings that you have are both angled slightly inward have a name? So like the, the way you wear your eyebrow piercings, there's a special name for that or it's just the way you've angled them? I, no, it's just the way I angle them. I, I mean, eyebrow piercing is the whole eyebrow. Sometimes I'll call them inner if they're further. These are kind of like middle, almost middle-ish. But no, I don't think there is a term for them. Just eyebrow piercings. Just eyebrow piercing. That's cool what's kind of neat piercings. about eyebrow piercings is yeah. there's a lot of options that people don't consider. Yeah. I mean, like mine are perpendicular because like your eyebrow has that curve to it. And a lot of times you follow the curve to make it look more natural, but that, that rule can be broken. You can kind of go at more of an angle. I've done it before where they look more flat across and it's a really cool look. It's a little longer bar, but something fun. What about snake bites? Asks Lorenzo. Does it hurt your gums? It depends on the jewelry and the angle it's pierced. If you go too far down on the snake bites and the disc is rubbing right up against your gums, yeah, it's going to cause a problem. A lot of times we can downsize to a shorter post and the disc will go into your lips, pulling it away from your gums, which can stop irritation. But if it doesn't go into the gums or if it doesn't go into the lip and it does cause irritation, take them out because you will get gum erosion. Most of the time, it has to be placed properly in the right size jewelry for it not cause problems. Right. Go to a professional. That's Go to a yeah. pro and they'll, Again, they'll help. Quang has seen a lot of different methods to position a client when piercing nipples and has heard that laying the client down can affect the positioning of the piercing. What are your thoughts on this? Trust your dots. Um, that's with any piercing. I have all my clients lay down for almost all piercings except for tongues for me. Um, when I do the markings, I make sure the people are standing or sitting up straight and I get the marks on properly. And I mean, uh, trust your dots. When you lay down, breasts will kind of shift and move. And yeah, it may look crooked. But you made those dots when I made it was those in the dots right position. Straight. It's Things aren't going to change when laying down. If you hit those dots properly, they, they stand up, it's going to look straight. So the most important thing is mark them while they're standing. Make good marks and trust mm-hmm. the marks. Yep. Uh, Lou Jane El Sadi asks, can a flat piercing be pierced by a six millimeter bar that's not a labrette, just a little ball at the other end, and it still hurts throbbingly two days later? Say that again with a... So we got a flat piercing with a six millimeter bar, uh, just a barbell, Mm -hmm. ball at each end. Yeah. Is that okay? Because we still find that it's hurting a lot two days later. Is that the appropriate jewelry? Six. I don't know what six millimeters is. Is that Uh, like the six millimeters? Quarter of an inch-ish, I think. Is that quarter of an inch? That's probably too short. If those beans are getting sucked in, you need a longer bar than that. I'm not exactly sure. So if it hurts and the, the balls are touching, like if you've swollen longer and they're bar, denting yeah. in, you need yeah. longer than six I know that cartilage bar. is really thin, but you have to accommodate room for swelling so you can downsize in the future. I prefer the disc in the back because it holds it steady when it's tight. The ball allows it to kind of shift up and down. The disc holds it a little bit more straight, I think. And if it's not over tight and it's loose in there, then it's just maybe going to hurt a little bit. It's for just a, couple a new days. piercing. It's like a bruise. If you have a bruise on your arm, it's going to be sore for a little while. Every time you bump it, just uh, do your best not to irritate it. But if it's too tight, get a longer bar. Lady Lioness says, hello, Scott and everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, I did my snake bites and vertical abret. I just want to know how long and when can I downsize? And also how long do I use the saline solution and the alcohol free mouthwash? It's oh. been uh, two weeks on oh. the snake bites. Wonderful, wonderful. And the vertical red. I would give it a couple more weeks. Generally, I tell people around a month is when I like to downsize to the shorter posts for the vertical red and snake bites. Downsize them all together. I understand the swelling's gone, and it's annoying having those antennas sticking out of there. But if you change it too soon, that tube of scar tissue is still thin enough where it could rip or tear cause swelling to re-irritate. And then if you have a shorter bar and you re-swelled back up, you're in trouble. So that's why I like a minimum of a month. Just be patient, keep cleaning it, 
and uh, you'll be good to go. Andrew Valentine wants to know, does a Prince Albert hurt? A little bit. I mean, uh, Prince Albert goes in the urethra out the bottom of the head of a penis. In my opinion, the worst part is there's a receiving tube which catches the needle, which has to go in the urethra, and I pierce into that tube. Um, more people complain about the receiving tube than the actual needle. I use really sharp Teflon-coated needles, so it's a fast, smooth procedure. If you have crappy needles, it's going to hurt a lot more, so go to a quality piercer. Laura says, hey, Scott. Hi. I took my nose piercing out after eight months as it never seemed to heal, and now it seems to have fully closed after three days, and I don't feel any fistula. How long should I wait to get it re-pierced a little lower down? I generally tell people about a month. Let the piercing close up as much as you can. Minimize the scarring to make it look as normal as you can. And then you should be fine. Um, if it was never healed, it still could be a little bit swollen. You want it to look in its most natural state so you get the right angle and it looks as good as possible. So generally a minimum of a month is what I tell people. Andrea says, hi, Scott. Love you and your content. Thank you. Love you too. I recently got my second and third lobes on my left ear, but I think that my third brushed up into the cartilage area, and I'm wondering how much that's going to affect the healing time. Um, if it hit the actual cartilage, maybe a couple more months. I mean, the closer you get towards the middle of your ear, the rougher the heels get. I would rather have the upper done than in the middle, but that third lobe where it meets the cartilage, that in-between spot, I generally tell people around three months, three and a half months, it should be healed. Uh, well, he wants to know, can my ear shrink after removing 20 millimeter plugs? And if so, how long on average can I go without them? So that'd be just short of uh, an inch. That'd be maybe like seven eighths ish. I, I wish I could tell you. I When I had my earlobe stretched, I used to take my plugs out at night so I could sleep. And then I'd go into the shower in the morning and then I like the hot water and I could pop my plugs back in without hurting them. Um, I think I could start doing that after around inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So I don't really exactly know. Um, some people, they shrink up fast. Some people, they stay open. But that's the way I did it is um, I would put it back in in the shower. So the hot water would loosen things up and it'd pop right back in. Thank you to Jalen and IS905 and Veronica. We appreciate that you guys are here having fun with us. Uh, Just Drift says 204,400 piercings since 1994 <laughs> and not one person died. Woo! Well done, Scott. Thank you very much. Wow, that's a big number. Uh, can you tell the difference between the D septum clicker and the traditional O ones? And does the former have a different natural balance compared to the latter? So are we talking about like in a septum to people where the D shaped clickers uh, compared to what a regular, you know, circle shaped clicker. Okay. We got to go to the drawing board here. to the drawing board. Okay. So now if I'm guessing right, what you're talking about is like nipple clickers where there might be a straight bar, the hinges like here, and a D ring. So it literally looks like a D. Some of the newer ones I'm seeing are more rounded like so. Now this is a real harsh angle, almost a 90 degree angle. If it's for nipples, that kind of hurts a little bit to get through unless you're fully, fully healed. When you have the less angle and it comes out, it's a little bit easier to kind of deal with in this area. Um, I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. The only other thing I'm thinking about is maybe if clickers, certain clickers are where they're round and then they have a little hinge here where it just kind of goes into click. So if it's one of those compared to, again, one of these. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. It's either the rounded part or this, but it depends on whether it's a septum or a regular round clicker or if it's a D ring. Does one hang differently than the other? Like is one superior in terms of like hanging? I prefer the fully round ones like this here, if it's a septum. Um, sometimes this style over here for septums, the actual ring can shift left or right. Ah, uh, yes. You it, know? Won't, it won't hang centered. So it might not hang as centered. But for nipple piercings, you need the straight through the center across there if you're doing like the D ring. Um, and the reason being is, okay, we're done with these drawings here. Um, <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing my job. you're wearing the ring in there and you have a D ring, the ring can flip up and down freely 
fairly nicely without having a huge amount of ring on the bottom part. If you're wearing a normal cap to bead ring, the ring has to be very large in order to flip it up and down. Um, okay. So that's kind of why people go with D-rings because they want it to kind of cup more around the areola and not hang down as much. That was very descriptive. I Hopefully I answered their question. I mean, you're here I to either answer right questions now. or confuse everyone. It's one of the two. Maybe both. A little of both. Uh, Ursula's odds and sods. Do the video <laughs> cut out for anyone else? Hopefully not. Let us know oh, if anything I like that not. happens, and we'll try to stay on top of it. Yeah. Uh, Ellen Blomberg says, Hi, I saw a picture on Pinterest of a third printed lobe piercing for someone who had lost the skin ring held together on top with two piercings. Any thoughts? So I, I think I know what they're talking about. I do, too. I've, I've seen a real similar thing. Um and I thought about doing a similar thing, like a biomechanical earlobe. So explain uh, if we don't know what we're talking about. What are we talking about? Okay. So, like, if you have an earlobe or, like, an ear. See how good I can draw that. That wasn't too bad. It's not terrible. It's um, good. A lot of times, this part of the ear gets cut off. Like, if you stretch your ear, like my earlobes. So, basically, what happens, let's go back to a normal drawing here. So, like, if you have the ear and then it was straight across like so. You have the tragus and you have the rest. So there used to be the earlobe down here. But what they're doing is they are doing a piercing maybe here and maybe a piercing here and having a prosthetic piece of jewelry almost connected like so. Is that what we're talking about? Maybe. I've seen another one where someone had uh, like a large stretched uh, ear yeah. and it ripped on one side. So now we have like a long strip hanging. And they've pierced the tip of that strip and rehung oh, it on the one I side know from the top. About. So, like this part might be hanging down like so because it came unhooked. And then they pierce here and connect it. Yeah, kind of almost like rehang it. It's yeah, a, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's it's rolling the dice and dealing with what you got. I guess because I mean, I thought of the same thing as like back in the day when I lost my lobes doing those two piercings. Then I could get a plug. And I can wear it, like create Just something that I can it. put plugs in. It's like <laughs> one or the other, but uh, uh, yeah, worth Getting worth creative, a thought. Thinking outside the box. Pretty cool, Ellen. Thanks for bringing that up. CJB says, "Hey Scott, I want to get a UFO and a septum, but I'm worried about finding a quality piercer to do them. Any tips on determining quality piercers in my area?" Um, go to Yelp, go to Google, find artists, look on their Instagram. Do your best to do your homework. If you see someone with a lot of mods or a lot of cool piercings, they ask them about it. who's your piercer. Um, the thing is, is a UFO piercing is a very intense piercing. It's very difficult to get right. The angles are insane and you have to have the right anatomy. So um, you want to find a qualified piercer. Now, the thing about APP is APP does not qualify the level of the piercer. It says they might be piercing for a certain amount of time. The APP, by the way, is Association of Professional Piercers. And it basically says that your shop is up to their standards. It's quality jewelry. The shop is clean. It's set up. It has the proper sterilization techniques, but it doesn't say anything about the ability of the piercer. So that's where the reviews will kick into place. If they're an APP piercer, it's going to be a clean shop and generally higher standards, but make sure they're good at what they're doing. It doesn't well. necessarily indicate that someone's Correct. been working for 10 years. Like you can work at an APP shop, but only have been working for six months as a piercer. You're saying, I think it's two, two years or three years before you can become a full fledged APP member, but you can also be a piercer of two years where you're doing three or four piercings a day. Right. It, and I can work at a shop that's APP and not be an APP member as the, as a piercer. Right. Like I have seen that. I don't know if that's right or not, but it, um, it happens. It, it does happen. Yeah. All right. So hopefully that helps there. Uh, ferret would like to get a rook piercing, but wants to swim and stay active and do other forms of cardio. What's the potential for the piercing moving and getting irritated or migrating? I generally suggest staying out of pools, lakes, hot tubs, rivers, oceans for a minimum of a month with any fresh piercing. Most wounds, like a cut on your arm, will create a scab, it seals shut, and it's not as big of a deal, it's not as likely to get infected. But with something that's an open wound for a month and you constantly get in all those chemicals, you're going to have nothing but problems. So if you can stay out a month and get it pretty well healed up, it's generally the safer bet. Cookie the Clown wants to get a coin stack in their tragus. Would you recommend stretching or getting it punched? Mm, I would stretch. Uh, 
if it's deep enough piercing, you have enough tissue, maybe you could, you know, stretch it up a little bit. I had mine stretched up to a six gauge, but I'll be honest with you. I ended up breaking my tragus. Mine was pierced closer to the edge and my tragus split in two. So now I have like almost two flaps in there. Once I got to the six gauge, I think I put the taper in and heard a, heard a crack and the damage was done. And I've only worn a 14 gauge ever since. I have seen people get all the way up to like a two gauge in those things before. So it depends on how much you want to do, how much you want to stack. Go slow. Don't yeah. mess up your tragus. Um, Laura S. wants to know if it's possible to get a tongue piercing, even if you have problems with wounds in your mouth that appear every few weeks. Wounds in your mouth. So we have uh, some sort of like, you know. Canker sores. Yeah, or something, something like that. Like some sort of uh, healing issue in I the mouth. I would talk to your doctor. I mean, if that's a situation where you're getting a lot of wounds all the time, it might be an issue. Maybe it's the foods you're eating. Maybe it's an allergy. Um I don't really know the answer to that one. I would say talk to your doctor if there's a lot of wounds. Just to yeah. make sure that it's not yeah. something to do with that will prevent the healing from happening. Or it could cause more. You know, yeah. if it's irritating, like you get a small irritation and the wound happens, then you're doing a tongue. That's a big irritation. It could cause more it irritation. Could cause more, yeah. Uh, hey, Scott, I just punched my almost year old cartilage piercing pretty hard and it didn't really <laughs> seem to care about it. In fact, it didn't feel anything at all. Is it possibly healed? You might be a superhero. <laughs> don't tease <laughs> no yeah so if, um, if it didn't hurt yeah, i'm good. sure you're totally fine if you can hit it that hard it doesn't that, that, that's a healed piercing that's what i tell people when you forget about it you bump it and go oh that didn't hurt at all yeah you're probably healed all right con palito just wants to say thank you i'm a piercing apprentice and love your content it's very useful you're very welcome and thank you for tuning in love having you here in our community Brittany Frank says, hey, Scott, my mom and I miss you in Minnesota. Do you know Brittany oh, Frank and her mom? Brittany Frank, Brittany Frank, Brittany Frank. It's been like over 10 years. I, I should know this. I, I, I feel like I do. do. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Will Jones says, hi, Scott. I had a helix through scar tissue before, and it got bad scar bumps. After treating my ear with scar gel, and can I get it re-pierced in the same place? Yeah. Do I expect these bumps to come back? Uh, generally with scar gels, they, they generally stay away. Um, if you get it pierced, a lot of times it's going to be better the second time around. Uh, a lot of times those bumps happen from irritating it, from bumping it, hitting it, some sort of irritation that you did. Unless it was pierced at such a crazy angle, then you'd want to pierce it as perpendicular as possible, like 90 degree angles. Music media outlet says, which one of you rides motorcycles? I feel like you guys ride. Ha ha. And if so, are you a Harley guy or a sport bike life? <laughs> I get accused of this all the time. Like what kind of bike do you ride? I'm like, I've never ridden a motorcycle in my life. No, never no, even ridden one. No, no, I think I've been on a dirt bike once or something like that, but that's the most I've ever done. Yeah. I'm, I'm not like a biker, but uh, when I lived in Pennsylvania, I had a motorcycle just cause it was a cool mm -hmm. way to go really fast on dirt roads. I've always wanted to. I mean, I live in Las Vegas where it's nice all year round. So I want to get something right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, just, just for fun. Not, not necessarily like in the life. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a Virago 900 is what I had. Um, Bookworm Baco says, Hey, I have a vertical labrette piercing. I got done in May 2022, but I changed it near the end of July and it still hurts here and there. How long before I can fully change it so it won't close? Meaning, like, leave it out, I guess. Uh, most piercings like that, if you leave them out, they do close fairly quick. It's not fair, but you, you need to find some sort of jewelry that's a little bit more permanent. Um, I don't know why you need to leave it out, but sometimes if you use like a little curved barbell, you can buy really small discs instead of the beads and then you could use have it anodized to close to a lip lip color which kind of hides it for you that would be the best bet i can think of um sometimes piercings take a long time to heal especially if they're constantly being irritated so walid wants to know if piercings above the genital area or on the genital area are possible sort of like a surface tragus yeah, that'd be a pubic piercing. Yeah, correct? pubic piercings. Well, kind of. Uh, technically, a pubic piercing like is where like if the penis meets the body right at that base. That's technically the pubic piercing. But I've done like the pubic mound area with surface bars, slightly higher up, things higher up, with vertical and horizontal. And also, is it like a Christina's almost? Christina's kind of. I've also seen like pubic mound area 
for like females where they're done with surface bars and you can create different designs and patterns too. So yes, well, the, there are yeah. many genital piercings. In fact, if you're not familiar, we have the, the our whole truth series. If you go look, there's a playlist of just the genitals. There's both yeah. male and female. It's amazing all the little folds you can get pierced in there. It's very it's interesting. Cool. And, and we're adding more videos as the time comes. We're not done with that list yet. It's yeah, that, that's what's so funny about it is we actually have quite a few more of the genital piercing whole truths left to do. There's, mm -hmm. there's quite a lot of material there. Uh, Eldina says, what are your thoughts on snug piercings and the healing process? I've been wanting to get one, but I've never had swelling issues with my other piercings. Doth, Antitragus, Conch, Rook. Well, the snug is like the granddad of like the, the swelling and the irritation and the tenderness. It's so cool, but it swells a lot. It's a long, rough heel. It's a painful piercing. Of the cartilage piercings that stand alone, it's one of the more painful ones and a rougher heel. It's a thick I'm chunk. not going to lie. It's thick. I mean, compare that, like, your, your helix and grab your snug. Like, it's twice as hard. Yeah. And like You'll I said, I put a long bar in there, and people look in the mirror and go, that's a long bar. And, like, a week later, it's like, I had a lady come back, like, it was perfect. It didn't swell at all for three weeks. And now, all of a sudden, I'm like, that's the snug. Interesting. So yeah. it would be no normal for three weeks and then suddenly hers was. Up. She's like, I didn't. She's like, you told me it was gonna swell, it didn't hurt, it didn't do this. And then I just bumped it a little bit and bam, it filled up that whole bar. So just saw that a couple days ago. Very cool. Uh early morning shenanigans podcast wants to know if it's safe to get your ears pierced at a zero gauge. I think it is. Um, it kind of depends on your anatomy. I would pierce you at a four gauge needle so we're not removing tissue and follow directly with a couple tapers to get you stretched up to the zero. It's going to leave a bigger scar. It's a rougher healing process, but it still heals fast and they're generally not very problematic. The other thing I was going to say about that is you could expect bleeding for a couple days just because it's a larger wound. Ilana yeah, I've done says, a lot of them. You've done a lot of them. Uh, Ilana says, hey, Scott, first of all, I love your videos. I'm a fan from Greece. Like yeah. a month ago, I got my tragus pierced, and then like 15 days in, it got a little red and had a bump, but the irritation does not go away. Mm -hmm. Cartilage are pains in the butt that way. Once you get a bump, it kind of goes back and forth. I hope you're not using earphones, earbuds, or stethoscopes, because when you put the pressure on there, that causes the bump. Even though it may seem like it's not hurting, that is probably the source of the damage. Um, sometimes just catching a towel, a shirt on there can be enough to irritate it. The emu oil can help calm it down if that's the case. If you're wearing the earphones, earbuds, or stethoscopes, it probably won't get better for a long time until you stop using those. But yeah, it does happen. Be patient. It will go away. All right. Brittany F Frank just joined in the live not long ago yeah. and wants to know, how do you get rid of the smell on a septum piercing? Fun question. Um, first of all, generally no one else can smell it. Um, but a septum piercing sometimes gets a little bit of funk from natural oils from your body, sometimes shampoos, soaps, things like that. And what you can do is use a natural cooking oil, like a vegetable oil, an olive oil, a peanut oil, as long as you're not allergic to it. Put it on a little paper towel, and when you rub that in there, that should mask and cover most of that smell. It does get kind of funky once in a while, but that is the easiest answer I can come up with. Just rub um, the oil straight into the actual jewelry. We, you know, we did a video on this a while ago. Ago, and we had a lot of um, responses and people said it really worked and it is the, the answer. And I don't people know are all, more, more they're people surprised. Yeah. Well, they think it's just them. They're yeah. like embarrassed. They think that this You're is something weird. Involved. It's like, now it happens to everybody. Yep, yep, exactly. So yeah. all right. great question. Thanks, Brittany. That was an awesome question. Uh, when scratching my lobes, if I use tapers to help the jewelry in and putting the taper doesn't hurt, but the transfer of the jewelry in does, is this normal? Sometimes certain jewelry like plugs will have a sharp edge on there and it's going to grab a hold. And that's where like, it's almost nice to have a piercer do the transfer for you because if you like the things line up, it just, it goes off just a little tiny bit. You lose your connection and it grabs a hold. So that's why it's nice to use glass that has a nice rounded edge on there. Or if you go to a piercer, we can generally transfer it smoother than you can. Diane Lopez wants to know during nipple healing, can I use sticky covers? So we're talking about uh, tagaderm patches, correct? Either that or like sometimes like a, like a nipple pasty type things. Okay. Sometimes people use those. Um, if the sticky adhesive sticks on the jewelry and gets pulled inside, that will cause a problem. So I would say no with that. Um, if you needed to do this, maybe you could take some gauze or paper towels and like, 
make like a band-aid type situation where the sticky doesn't stick to the actual jewelry. The actual wound. If yeah. there's any sort of adhesive sticking to it and gets pulled inside, people have a little big reactions to the sticky adhesiveness to it. So just watch the adhesive getting pulled in. Yeah, that's generally the problem. Andrea wants to get a tongue pierced, but is hesitant because they have a permanent retainer on the back of their top teeth. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that would be an issue or can we go for it and get a tongue piercing sometimes when you first get the tongue piercing people can't almost close their mouth because the bar is so long and you have to accommodate room for that but you can downsize in the future that would be my only concern is during the healing process um but i would have to kind of see the retainer to see how much room you actually have for it sometimes it doesn't work foggy has a question about getting two regular tongue piercings like front and back mm -hmm. uh, can we get them at the same time or is it smarter to do one and then the other I have done them at the same time, but generally I like doing them one at a time. It's just, it's so intense. It's so much swelling. One is, is a lot in itself. Lisa Brown says, Hey Scott, if I get my tongue pierced and my Ashley on the same day, will the swelling go down at the same time? And how long will it take for me to go from a 14 to a double zero on my ears? Okay. Um, so the swelling will probably not go down at the same time. I'm guessing the tongue is going to go down quite a bit faster than the Ashley will. The Ashley is a little bit denser tissue and stays swollen longer. But I would say the tongue is going to seem healed after about a month. The Ashley is going to be a couple months before it feels fully healed up. So the Ashley is a little bit longer of a healing process than the tongue. And then what was the other about stretching? Uh, stretching from a 14 up to a double zero. Okay. Um, 14 to a double zero should probably take a little over a year. 14 to a 12, to a 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, double zero. That eight, that's 16 months. Probably between, yeah, 14 to 16 months is on the average amount of time you should get to there. Would expect. And if yep. you go faster, you're not helping yourself. You might Correct. be wrecking your ears. Ripping and tearing. Nice gradual stretches. Jasmine wants to know how long to expect a navel piercing to stay red. We've had it for about two weeks, and it looks and feels completely fine other than that little bit of redness that's still there. You're still healing. You're still developing that fistula. So all your white blood cells are still kind of going to that area, which is why a lot of times it stays red. Um, another thing to keep in mind is maybe if you're wearing higher-waisted pants and it's rubbing up against it, that will keep it red as well. Some people, the redness goes away faster. Sometimes it does take a while. But pants are the biggest factor these days. Sage wants to know, for a new tongue piercing, should you rinse your mouth with mouthwash or should you use the salt water and saline that you use on the outside? No, I generally use just uh, alcohol-free mouthwash. If there's alcohol in there, it's going to burn and it's going to cause a lot more swelling, but that's all I generally suggest on the inside. I don't want the saline on the inside to make you sick. It's I don't know. It's just only necessary on the outer parts of the mouth to use the saline mouthwash on the inside. Here's a good question from Fairlyn K. Hi, if I've been stretching using round tunnels, once I reach my goal side, is it going to be difficult to put in a teardrop-shaped plug instead? I never wore teardrop plugs. Um, I tried once to put them in my nostrils, but it just hurt too much, so I stopped. Um, I had really big earlobes, and I never really put those in. So most of the time, your ears are flexible enough where it should just go into place. It's not one you want to stretch with with teardrops, I don't think, unless you're trying to reshape your ears because that mm -hmm. point is kind of the area where it would want to stretch. But if it's at that size, it should work. I do know some people have some tenderness up in the anti-tragus area where that point points towards. It might take a couple of days to kind of get used to that, but that would be about the only irritation I know of. Yes, Emily just talking about how the, the soap, mm -hmm. that it is a, a silly state law. Texas is another one that requires you to say that. It's, it's ridiculous, yeah. And it'd be nice if they would just like check once in a while you know because technology's come around things change and it's like it's law so it has to be like how long has that been a law now there's so many laws like that because so many it's, it's easy to add new ones, laws yeah. but it's tough to get rid of old laws yeah, yeah. so we just keep getting more and more and more until we're all tied up yep that's the way it goes nico x says my piercer had the needles out and ready at my consultation should i be concerned about him not opening the needle in front of me yes and no um 
if you're using a Statum autoclave, can you pull up a picture, show what a Statum sure um, and also the Midmark M3 look like? Now, if your piercer has one of these autoclaves in their room, they're going to sterilize it for you, right in front of you. And a lot of times they're going to pull out a little sterilization tag, which shows that everything's sterile and clean. But if they have one of these, like- A little machine like this, it's going to pull out this little tray, put the stuff in there and close it. Exactly. And as you can see, they're not cheap machines to have. Um, and then there's also another one called a Midmark M3, which is the type that I use. Um, they're really fast autoclaves. But if they don't have one of those in the room, not they exactly. should be opening the things in front of you. You just tried M3. I just typed M3. Cars. Apparently, there's other M3s cars, in the yeah. world. Yeah, I learned that the other day, too. So, <laughs> But anyways, that's kind of the situation. I open all the stuff and make sure people see that it has been sterilized. If you're just going into a room and there's just stuff sitting out on the tray, that's a red flag to me. I don't like that at all. Technically, you should be able to trust your person, but, you know, it's nice to know. Uh, Catberry says, one more question, please. How long should I wait until I can downsize my helix stud? When you downsize, do you remove the original stud and then insert the shorter one in? And doesn't this prolong the healing time? Um, yes and no. Uh, with the helix piercing, I generally suggest a month and a half, maybe two months would be the earliest you can downsize, sometimes a little bit longer. Now, what I, I use a taper, what a lot of people use for stretching, but I have like a threaded end or a pin. So I'll unscrew the ball end. I'll screw the taper in, slide it through. So it's just like a long barbell. So I don't pull crusties through. I can unscrew the back and put the new back on and pull it through. So there's always something inside the piercing. It's not like I have to research. I'm not ripping and tearing. I'm not leaving the hole just completely exposed and open unless it's healed up enough to do so. So that doesn't cause the damage. That's why you go to the piercer and have it downsized. Because they have the equipment to do it yep. right. Yep. Cohen wants to know if four weeks is a reasonable time for your tragus to, to continue to have crusties coming out. 100%. Um, even sometimes months, sometimes up to six months, you're still going to have crusties. So it takes a long time for cartilage to heal. Nothing to worry about. Nope. Totally normal for a long crusties time. Crusties happen. CB has read that in the larger sizes, you should wait at least four months between stretches. But I only stretch by a half a millimeter at a time instead of going by the gauges. So can I wait less time since it's only a half a smaller it's, step? I still say a month and a half to two months minimum between each stretch listen to your body. It's a basic guideline. Even at the larger sizes, you're still stretching the same amounts. Like you said, like a half a millimeter or one millimeter. Um, if it hurts, it's not ready. I don't care about those. If it's, but it's been two months, I should be able to. Some people just don't stretch as fast. Some people, their jewelry's fallen out after a month and they have to put the next size in. Those are just general rules as far. Listen to your body. You That's the best rule. Pay attention to how you feel. Yes. Excellent advice. Alex Spencer says, hi from Liverpool. Hello. Liverpool. Cool. Funny name says, hi. Question. I'm planning to get spider bites soon, and I'm just wondering if getting them both done at the same time is okay. I have a very high pain tolerance, so that's not my worry, but is it safe? <laughs> yeah, it's it's totally safe. You're going to be swollen in that area. Um, two lip piercings and, and the same sitting is not that big of a deal. Yeah, I say go for it. All right. We just have a few more questions we can take because we are almost out wow, of time today. Time, time goes fast. Really Will does. Jones says, Jared, I just wanted to say your mustache is very impressive. Thank you, sir. I it appreciate it. certainly that. is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Lady Lioness, I forgot to ask what type of jewelry for a vertical abret and what size is good to use? It, it varies from person to person. I generally use a 16 gauge curved barbell. Um, I'm not good with... Uh, um, millimeters, but I use generally a three eighths, sometimes a seven sixteenths. And if someone has a really larger lip, I'll even go all the way up to a, a, a half inch sometimes. So Kane K says, Hey Scott, I have FIBO. How do you think this would affect a piercing? I'm wanting to get the snake bites. I also love your videos and I think this channel would be the best and reliable answers. Fibro fibromyalgia, yeah. perhaps. Tough to say. You'd have to ask your doctor how that. Might I would say, things. yeah, talk to your doctor. Um, I'll look into it today. Uh, if you tune in another uh, two weeks, ask me again, and I might I'll have a better answer for you. Because I I really don't know the answer to that one. How that affects the immune system, how it affects healing, but I'll look into it. 
And we're just going to ask one more question. Here. Sorry sure. to everyone whose question we did not get to today. We'll try. try to get to you next time. Shadow Cat wants to know, is it true that a normal tongue piercing will always damage your teeth if you wear it for a long time? For example, a few years. And does the jewelry being plastic help reduce the chance of that damage? No, no. It does not reduce the, the damage. Sometimes the plastic can cause more damage because... Sometimes it's just as hard and can still break your teeth. Some people use that plastic and they'll still run it against your teeth. They're like, oh, it's safer, but you're getting gum erosion and your teeth can fall out that way. The key is, is to have the proper downsized jewelry and don't get in the habit of playing with it. If you're going to play with it, just take it out. That's the easiest answer I can give with that. Um, and no, it doesn't always cause damage if you do it properly. Now, that's winding up today. A bunch of fantastic questions. I haven't said it yet, but if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe. It really helps us out a ton. Now, if you enjoy videos like this, like I said, hit the subscribe, hit the like, and of course, keep putting holes your body. See you all in the next video.